Welcome to Ethics, a Lions University course brought to you by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. My name is Lion Bud Wall and I'd like to welcome you to this evening's webinar and remind you that we are recording this session for those who can't participate live or for anyone wishing to review the material at a later time. Once we begin, you may be asked to respond to a question or a poll and uh, or you may have a question yourself, and this can be handled either by typing a question in the questions pane in the panel along the right side of your screen, or by raising your hand or, or clicking on your hand so you can be unmuted, giving you the opportunity then to share verbally with the entire group. Assisting me in, uh, in tonight's program in the background is Wendy Kane, who will be monitoring some of those areas as, as well as handling uh, the recording for tonight's session. So we want to thank Wendy for helping out and Wendy, whenever you need to jump in and um, have any comments to share, please go ahead and do that. Ethics is course 225. It, it, it is an elective course for the Lions University Master's Program that's designed to help Lions lead at the district level. The Master's Program involves the completion of the 10 required courses and at least five elective courses. And on the left side of your screen, you will notice the, the 10 required courses. And on the right side are, is a listing of 13 elective courses that will be offered throughout the year. The elective courses, you have to take, as I said, at least five of those and, and all of the ten required courses. This is the Lions University website, lionsuniversity.org, and this slide shows a page in the bachelor's program uh, listing the courses offered in that level. The master's program page would have a similar uh, listing, but uh, would include the courses in the master's program itself. If you were to click on any of those courses listed on this page, you'd then be taken directly to that particular course page, giving you all the details for the course, along with the link to register and links to any course handouts and, of course, the, the quiz. And uh, we even have a calendar page you can click on to see what courses are scheduled in the weeks and months ahead. This slide shows what a course page typically looks like. It lists the the course name and number gives a description of the course, shows you who the faculty member is, and gives you links to register for the class and, and any course materials. And if you haven't already done so, you have to create a separate username and, and password to get in to register for the course and have access to the quiz. After participating in the webinar or watching the video of the webinar, you can click on the Mark as Completed box there at the bottom, marked by the, the red arrow, and uh, you, you, mark, you, you click on that tab at the bottom of the page and you'll be allowed then to take the quiz. We can track your progress and you can track your progress of, of the, the program. Uh, when you complete the quiz and submit your answers, you will be instantly given the results and then you can click on the My Account tab near the top of the page. And uh, you can see first-hand view of the courses you've completed in both the bachelor and the master level programs. This shows, uh, in this particular case, the bachelor's programs, and, and in the green shows the courses that have been completed and, and successfully and the courses that have yet to be completed. Our faculty member this evening is uh, past District Governor Gord Taylor, a past District Governor who comes to us from District A3 in Multiple District A of Ontario, Canada. Last month, Lion Gord was our faculty member for the Meaningful Ceremonies webinar, which was very well received. And we're sure this evening's presentation with its interesting topic, Ethics, of which I think we had about 58 people uh, registered for, which is uh, a large amount. Um, <laughs> It'll include some important information for all, all to share. Lion Gore has been a presenter at many different 
Lion venues, including past USA Canada Lions leadership forums, and he's always done a great job for us. So with that, Gord, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Lion Bud. Well, welcome um, to ethics and uh, I'll ask to go, yeah, there we are. Now when I first thought about uh, volunteering to take on this topic and this webinar, my thoughts were that uh, I would simply analyze the Lions Code of Ethics and elaborate on expected behaviors for Lions. But as I began to do some research and look deeper into the topic, it struck me that I really needed to define more clearly what the topic of ethics entailed, not only for those who chose to take the course, but also for myself. So as you study the graphic on the screen, and some of those words and descriptors jump out at you, I think you can understand a little more the complexity of the topic. So this session will hopefully be one that not only states facts, but also adds to our knowledge and gives, gets us thinking about things such as the behavioral expectations of being a lion. I do not expect that all of you will agree with my interpretation of some points and uh, that you will realize that ethics can be very subjective and situational. I hope that in the next hour I can make you think and to question and I will try to refrain from sermonizing. So the objectives for this course are to define ethics and differentiate ethics from morals, to examine the code of ethics, to look at how our code of ethics can and should be applied to everyday situations as a Lions Club or as a person, to examine some of the recent policy statements from LCI regarding ethical standards and conduct, and hopefully to make participants aware of their responsibility when it comes to the code of ethics and practice. So let's begin by looking at a definition of ethics and how ethics differs from morals. Well, as you can see by the uh, screen, when we speak of ethics, we're speaking of an external set of rules or expected behaviors, whereas when we speak of morals, we're, setting, uh, we're talking about a set of intrinsic principles which leads a person to judge what is right and wrong. So when we speak of a code of ethics, we can think of the rules of expected behavior for different occupations and cultural groups. For example, we speak of medical ethics or legal ethics. And many professions have adopted a clear set of ethics governing their own specific professions. So, to put it in rather simple terms, I turn to the great pop expert on most topics, Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard of NCIS fame, who simply states the difference between morals and ethics is the ethical man knows he shouldn't cheat on his wife, whereas the moral man doesn't cheat on his wife. Let's... Uh, turn to our Lions Code of Ethics for a few minutes and a little bit about Lions history. Our first convention was held in 1917 where we became the International Association of Lions Clubs. And in that year, uh, a decision was made to draft a code of ethics. GM Cunningham of the Houston Lions Club, a contemporary of Melvin Jones, was put in charge of this task. And after drafting the code, he sent it on to Melvin Jones in Chicago, who reviewed it, and then sent it on for further review to Ari Kleinschmidt and Walter LeBrand of the Oklahoma City Lions. Now, Kleinschmidt was one of the 
one of two of the six original directors of Lions International. Uh, at the 1917 convention, Walter LeBrand had introduced what is now one of the most fundamental concepts of lionism. No club shall by its bylaws, constitution, or otherwise hold out the financial betterment of its members as its object. That amendment was passed following a heated debate. But the final draft of the Code of Ethics was introduced and debated on the floor of the 1918 convention in St. Louis, Missouri. It was passed at that convention and has changed only slightly in its wording since 1918. According to Martin and Kleinfelder in their book, Lions Clubs in the 21st Century, Jones felt that they had drafted a leadership code rather than simply a code of ethics. Jones had apparently studied many of the historic codes of behavior, including the Ten Commandments, the Thoughts of Hammurabi of Babylon, the Napoleonic Code, and he desired a code that would not contain a lot of shall nots, but rather one which would stress positive behaviors. I'm sure that as a member of the Masonic Order, Jones was also looking for a blueprint, blueprint for behavior in life and not simply a set of rules for Lions Clubs. This quote by uh, past international president Lloyd Morgan of New Zealand summarizes how many feel about the Lions Code of Ethics and its influence on lions. It's a practical guide to behavior enriched by the fact that there is a warm feeling of satisfaction in knowing that you are associated with others who believe as you do. So let's take a look at our code of ethics. In the next few slides I will try to examine each of the points in the code of ethics and point out what I believe are the fundamental behavioral expectations in each. We have to put the document in context, I think. It was originally, and still is, a code of ethics for businessmen. And as our demographic has changed to encompass members from all walks of life, I think it would be easy to dismiss many of the points in the document as not pertaining to certain members that are not in business. My hope is tonight that we can look at each point and find one or two universal expectations. So our first point, to show my faith in the worthiness of my vocation by industrious application to the end that I may merit a reputation for quality of service. It certainly speaks uh, to our vocation and as a business person I'm sure uh, can be interpreted as how one conducts business. But if we look at the word vocation and take its original meaning it means a calling. So then we can look for more universal meanings in this very statement. So the key behaviors that I see in this first statement is that we are expected to work hard and provide quality of service. I think this is applicable not only to the individual Lions member, but needs to be taken into account when as a club we choose a service project or for that matter a fundraiser. One of the concerns that I hear and that district officers will hear is that we have too many what are referred to as knife and forkers if we take the obligation of our induction seriously, we have to be more than a member that shows up for dinner meetings. We have to be willing to work hard on committees and projects to the best of our ability. To seek success and to demand all fair remuneration or profit as my just due, but to accept no profit or success at the price of my own self-respect lost because of an unfair advantage taken or because of questionable acts on my part. Once again, a statement that can be interpreted as a matter of business ethics. 
And in 1918, at the end of the First World War, when the world was dealing with a changing economic time and business atmosphere, I'm sure that this statement was included to address the business expectations of members of this newly formed organization. But once again, let's look at or for a more universal expectation. The universal expectations that I see in this statement point out three major key behavioral expectations. Ambition, self-respect, and integrity. Once again, as Lions Clubs, I think these are great ideals to have front and center when we plan projects and fundraising. We have to have a willingness to succeed at what we do, no matter what the obstacles the ambition to work for our goals. At the same time, we must maintain our self-respect and integrity. Perception is something that should always be kept in mind. We serve our communities and should be viewed as an organization that is respected because of our integrity. Funds collected from our community must be seen as going to worthy causes in our local or global community and there must not be any hint of questionable acts and personal gain. To remember that in building up my business it is not necessary to tear down another's, to be loyal to my clients or customers and true to myself. The business theme again continues, but again I think this contains some universal truths and expectations that can be applied to both individuals and clubs. I see the keys here as fairness, loyalty, and personal and professional integrity. Once again, perception plays a major role. I believe that these behaviors also dictate the expectations of club members. If club elections or appointments to key committees are viewed by individual members as being unfair, the culture of our club is soon destroyed and the club is in trouble. If members feel that they are not being supported by their fellow members, they will soon leave or create difficulties within the club. Once again, the word integrity is key. We are expected to show personal and professional integrity in all our dealings. We are bound to have differences with others on certain matters, but showing integrity means that those differences can be discussed and worked out without personal animosity and with decorum at club meetings. Whenever a doubt arises as to the right or ethics of my position or action towards my fellow man, to resolve such doubt against myself. This leads us into what I consider a key to maintaining the expected ethical behavior of a lion. In many ways, I see this statement as mirroring a basic tenet that exists in most cultures. In Judeo-Christian terms, it is known as the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It also demands a personal and professional accountability. We are asked to accept our own biases and our own mistakes and to own up to our own shortcomings. The expression, there is no I in team, can also come to mind. As lions, we are expected to work as a team. And should we have disagreements, we are told that we should look at ourselves and our views first before judging someone else and declaring that they are wrong. To hold friendship as an end and not a means. To hold that true friendship exists not on account of the service performed by one to another, but that true friendship demands nothing but accepts service in the spirit in which it is given. 
One of the re major reasons that members join Alliance Club is to work with like-minded individuals and discover new friendships. As a district officer, I'm pleased to say that I can now count friends through Lions in the hundreds if not thousands. So we're expected to recognize friendship as unconditional. I find it interesting that we sometimes speak of the friendship shown by a child or by a pet as being unconditional. But as we grow to adulthood, we often question friendship as being self-serving or conditional upon what one can gain from it. I believe we are being asked as lions to form friendships that are unconditional, that demand nothing and are accepting of others. Always to bear in mind my obligation as a citizen of my nation, my state, and my community, and to give to them my unswerving loyalty in word, act, and deed. To give freely of my time, labor, and means. Well, the founders of our organization had just come through a world war. I'm sure that in 1918, patriotism was uppermost in their minds. But as lions of today, we are also being asked to show our patriotism and pride in all that we do. As citizens of our nation, state, and community, we are expected to show our loyalty in word, act, and deed, and our charity with time, labor, and means. But I would suggest here that we not only owe our allegiance to our own nation, but as lions to the global nation. The entire world has become our community, and when the call goes out, we should view ourselves as citizens of the world community, as well as our individual community. It's interesting that the year after the founders of Lions adopted the Code of Ethics, they adopted the Lions Objects, which today begin with three statements dealing with citizenship. First, to create and foster a spirit of understanding among the people of the world, to promote the principles of good government and good citizenship, and to take an active interest in the civic, cultural, social, and moral welfare of the community. We are called upon in our objects, as well as in our ethics, to behave as citizens of the world and to look outside our national, state, or local community to serve. To aid my fellow men by giving my sympathy to those in distress, my aid to the weak, and my substance to the needy. Once again, our ethics are mirrored in our objects. The key to our organization is to aid those less fortunate. When we read anything of Melvin Jones' ideals in forming our organization, the basic premise was, as Martin and Kleinfelder state, quote, a feeling that if, the, if individuals who were successful in business and the professions devoted a portion of their time and energy to community service, they could be a positive force for building not only their own community, but also the world community. So the key to this ethical expectation, in my mind, is to have sympathy, empathy, and a willingness to give aid to those less fortunate. This is an ethical obligation and the reason that our organization exists. And if members and or clubs lose that focus, then as lions, they are basically behaving unethically. And finally, to be careful with my criticism and liberal with my praise, to build up and not destroy. This final statement refers once again 
to the idea of the golden rule, but goes one step further as we are to be liberal with our praise and constructive. So the keys here are acceptance of one another and those who may be different in some way, to be positive in our, in our undertakings and our views of what can and should be accomplished in serving others, and to be constructive. It's easier to find fault and criticize than to be constructive and find solutions. As lions, we are ethically bound to do the latter. So let's put the code of ethics into practice in everyday life. We've now reviewed our code of ethics. And in the next few slides, I want to focus on everyday situations and how this code can be applied. I'll admit from the outset that in a couple of these cases that we will examine, I had to question how I personally would apply the code of ethics. The original purpose of a university was to question and seek solutions. And I hope the following few scenarios will have you doing just that. For each of the three scenarios, I would ask that you read through the situation and from your own understanding of the code of ethics, choose the, from the solutions provided the one which you feel is the best ethical solution. We'll have a look at the various choices that you make and summarize. So our first scenario and if I can just briefly glance through it, Lions Club has voted on a major community project which will mean raising a great deal of money. They've been approached by a local businessman to partner with them and provide much needed resources. The businessman is known to cut corners, treat his customers and employees poorly, and to have become successful through rather shady business practices. The club must make a decision as to whether to accept the partnership. So, choose one of the following. Accept the partnership because it will assist in providing needed services to the general community, or reject the partnership because of the possible stain on the reputation of the club by accepting. Gord, do you want to go, did you want to um, show all three scenarios first, or did you want to go straight to the poll right now? Let's go to the poll on the first scenario. All right, let's see if I can pull that up. Okay, that's the that's the poll. Looks like we have um, gosh, over almost 70% have voted already. Good. 80%. We'll give them just a couple more seconds. And All right, we'll go ahead and okay. close the poll. We've got 90% voted. Yeah. And see if I can share this with everyone. There you go. Can you see the result? Yeah, I can. And... Um... As I mentioned, um, when it comes to ethics, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Uh, but it would seem that 83% of our um, the people responding would reject it, probably because the uh, Code of Ethics uh, talks about um, a certain standard of behavior. And when we're talking about again, perception that uh, person who we're going to, or organization that we're going to be partnering with, uh, better have as good uh, a perception in the community as, as our club. But then again, I'm sure that the people who would have accepted it would go with the school that would say, well, you do what's best for the entire community. And uh, if we accept 
we can probably do more good. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we go on to the next uh, scenario? Okay. Okay, and this one's something that I know in Canada we've just gone through municipal elections and we're heading for federal ones, so it, it sort of rings true perhaps here. Municipal elections around the corner. One of the members is running for office. He asks to speak at a Lions Club meeting, outlining his position on major issues. Uh, the board of directors needs to decide whether he should be allowed to speak. So should they allow him to speak because they know him to be a good lion and feel that most of the members of the club will support him? Invite all the candidates running for office to speak to the club and give them equal time. Or tell the member that he is not able to speak at the club because partisan politics is not allowed to be debated at club meetings. So, shall we go to that poll? All right. Now that's, that's up and running and we have over half, oh, well, <laughs> it's pretty wow, three quarters. <laughs> yeah. They're almost done now. Yep. We've got 85% voted. And we'll go ahead and close the poll in two seconds. One second, and we'll do that now. Uh, and here comes the again. Yep. I think I mentioned at the beginning that um, ethics can be situational and can certainly be personal. And, and we seem to have a, a quite a split here. Um, with 45% uh, saying that we should have an all-candidates meeting, uh, and pretty well the same number saying that um, because we don't speak about partisan politics in our club, uh, nobody should speak. And then we've got 9% that simply say, let's allow him to speak um, because he's a good lion. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot depends on the culture of your club, too, when it comes to this. And uh, I, I frankly put this out there, um, and I think I probably go for number two myself, but I can see why people would also um, go with our no partisan politics. Yeah, I, so scenario. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I agree with you. I think it's uh, it depends a lot. J just like in anything else, um, it depends on the culture um, of the club, of the area in, in which your your club um, is located, and what has been the traditions and and uh, history of of those areas, uh, your district, of your multiple district, and. Um, in addition to your club, so you, there's a lot. There's a lot to take into consideration when you're trying to decide the right thing to do. Yeah, and and that's what it's all about, isn't it? The right thing to do. We'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Go so scenario one. three, and this is one that um, is interesting because I've I've been. Uh, involved with something that's come close to this. A new Lions Club is being formed. Required number of members have been found to charter the club and the paperwork has, and chartering fees have been filed. But prior to the chartering, a number of members withdraw as they were not properly informed of their financial obligations of being a member. So there's a meeting and um, what should they do? Inform LCI that they are withdrawing the chartering application? Should they allow the charter to go through and work hard to get the numbers back to the required number? Or should they charter the club and have the secretary drop the members when filing the first report on my LCI? Well, let's find out what everybody thinks. Wow. Taking a little longer, I think people have to really think about this one. Mm -hmm. 
And as we can see, the uh, the results are going to show that there, there's been a lot of thought put into this. About 75% have, have voted. Uh, we'll take just a couple more seconds and close it out. Give you an opportunity to put in the last votes. Okay, we'll close it out now. And share the results. Okay, and and we've got num uh, nearly half of the people would withdraw the chartering application. More than a third, however, are going to allow the charter to go through and work to get the numbers back. And 15% uh, are just going to drop the numbers on the first report. Well, again, uh, this comes down to, you know, what are the rules? Um, ethics and legalities really can come very close, in fact, can overlap, I think, in, in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you said at the start of the program, um, I don't know whether you did this during the webinar or when, when the three of us were talking um, um, individually before it started, but you, you said, you know, there's, there's no right answer to, you know, when it comes to ethics or, you know. Like, yeah, it, it depends on on a lot of different things, you know, traditions and, and who does what and, and where you are, and so there, there's a lot of, a lot to be considered. Well, I hope that the three scenarios have have basically pointed out that when it comes to ethics, we can have a set of rules, but it's the interpretation of those rules that and and deciding what the the correct behavior is that what ethics is all about. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay, so let's um, move up a little bit from uh, 1918 and, and go up to 2004 because in 2004, in doing my research, I found that um, there was a committee report to the International Board um, that uh, was a revision of the ethical standards and conducts for lions. And these documents are available, by the way, from the legal department. And I put the uh, LG 414, and it's a PDF, and 415, 416, and 417. Um, but it's basically a policy document outlining the standards and conduct expected for club officers, district officers, council chairpersons, and executive officers, international directors, and board appointees. And I have to admit, and having been a, uh, a district governor, um, I cannot recall in all of my training uh, having seen this document. And so when I came across it, I made sure that our district governor-elect has it for the upcoming club officer training. Because it's basically the same document for each of the groups uh, with some detailed references depending upon the needs of the group. So the document, though, contains four core values that serve as ethical standards. And I'm going to outline those on the next few slides. So the first one is integrity, and we've talked about that when we talked about the Code of Ethics. Um, but it's now a, listed as a core value under this policy. Um, in previous discussions of the Code of Ethics, we looked at a number of statements which stress this as a core value. Um, but here's our modern expectation that Lions Clubs International insists on the highest standards of personal and professional integrity. We must all make every possible effort to safeguard the association's assets. We must also comply with all association policies and applicable laws. Uh, I'd suggest here that this 
also demands that we as Lions and especially as district officers have to take the time to become knowledgeable when it comes to our policies and laws. Um, so it's not just a matter of taking some courses, it's a matter of digging in and looking out these policies. The second one um, is accountability. Lions Clubs International expects all club officers and, and club officers here can you can replace district governors, council chairperson, or past and current executive officers, etc., um, in the appropriate document to honor commitments as authorized and made on behalf of the association and take individual responsibility for all actions and outcomes. It has no tolerance for ethical violations. And that's an interesting statement considering what we've just seen in interpreting what ethical violations might be. So um, I think it's an interesting thing to, to think about accountability. Okay, can we go to the third? Um, the, <clears throat> the third uh, key here is teamwork. Um, Lions Clubs International seeks to maintain a service environment that encourages innovation, creativity, and positive results through teamwork. We must all practice leadership um, to train, inspire, and promote full participation and individual development for all Lions. We encourage open and effective communication and interaction. And I, you know, effective communication and open communication, I think, is is a key term here. So I've mentioned teamwork in our previous discussion. Uh, the term was never used in the original Code of Ethics, but is certainly seen as a basic concept uh, which the Code demands. And here it's stated as a core value. And finally, um, excellence. Lions Clubs International is dedicated to fair treatment, mutual respect, diversity, and trust. We must challenge each other to improve our services, our processes, and ourselves, strive together to serve our membership and communities, and help the association achieve its goals. So I think this summarizes many of the statements that we've previously discussed, uh, but it's a core value. We strive for excellence, and excellence is described here in statements that we've previously discussed as part of our Code of Ethics. So I'm going to apologize for the very wordy slides. I'm sure the, that um, uh, if I was taking the Senior Lions Leadership course, I would be criticized for having many too many words on this slide. But um, I thought that this um, statement really summarizes the responsibilities and expected behaviors of Lions, and especially of Lions leaders. So we begin with the understanding of our core values and ethical standards. The role in the association demands an ongoing vigilance to maintain these standards of honest and ethical conduct. Lions Clubs International has adopted several policy statements that concern the association's ethical standards, and there's a few examples listed. And then it states at the bottom there, in many instances, ethical standards intersect legal requirements. So again, the legal department was, uh, I certainly appreciated um, some of the information I got when I was doing the seminar from the legal department, and they are certainly available, and uh, most of these can be, most of these policies can be obtained right on the uh, Lions Clubs International website. Well, let's take a couple of seconds anyway to talk about enforceability. 
Uh, Robert Russell, I came across a statement from him on, in an article that he wrote on how to evaluate a code of ethics. And he says that in a order for a code of ethics to work in practice, there must be a way of implementing it. Are its values and principles observable and its pol uh, in policy and practice? So basically, uh, what do you do if you feel that an action being taken by a member or club is unethical? And if you are training to be a district officer, you may very well come across a question like this. So again, we go back to uh, that statement of um, policy, the 2004 one, and the next slide, I think, again, um, is a rather wordy one. But states clearly that if an ethical or legal compliance issue arises that raises a question in your mind, you have a responsibility to bring that issue to the attention of the appropriate International Board Committee or International Office Division. You may also bring ethical or legal concerns to the attention of your district governor, International Board of Directors, the executive officers, or the administrative officers of the association. So we have a responsibility. OK. And the next slide, please. Now again, um, while researching for this webinar, I, I was in contact with the Lions Clubs International Legal Department, who provided me with a document entitled The Statement of Values and Code of Ethics for Nonprofit and Philanthropic Organizations. Rather long title. But it's produced by a group called the Independent Sector. Now, uh, this is a group in the United States, so I wasn't aware of the group. Um, I could find no evidence that Lions Clubs International is a signatory member of the organization, but it would appear um, that uh, our organization is certainly in agreement with its policies. And so I've listed the uh, website as a reference so that anyone interested can go on and, and do some further studying of, of that document. Um, but it does outline um, ethical expectations for nonprofits and is interesting reading. Okay. Oh. Again, I'll conclude our discussion with another reference to the 2004 Lions Clubs International Policy document entitled Ethical Standards and Conduct. The core values of the ethical standards of Lions Clubs International, along with the policies of the International Board of Directors, provide a guide and framework to help you understand what is expected from you and to help you make good decisions. As they are not all inclusive, your good and best judgment is essential in doing the right and ethical thing. Please join us in a continuing Lions Club's traditions of honest and ethical practices in serving millions of people in need. And so now I believe we've come full circle. And I suggest to you that the expectations of this statement are that a line will be, as uh, we talked about at the very beginning, a moral person. So to review, um, I hope that the this uh, last 45 minutes or so has met the objectives that we set at the beginning. Uh, that you have a somewhat better understanding of Lions Ethics. And I hope to see all of you at the USA Canada Forum in September. And I'll now turn the webinar back to Pastor International Director Butt. 
Well, thank you very much, Pastor Mr. Governor Gord. Uh, excellent presentation and a lot of a uh, lot of interesting material and uh, references in in your presentation, and uh, really makes really makes a person think about things because I know in, in my situation traveling around many many parts of the of the country and and North America and the world actually when I was serving on the board you know you run across uh, not all the time but I mean you do run across instances that uh, would be considered unethical and muted uh, muted you need to take a stand on that because, uh, um, like you say, we have a responsibility to protect the our code of ethics and policies and our and our lines of international trademarks. And uh, you know, when you when you see something that is, that isn't right, you need to you need to see if you can uh, do something to make it right. And uh, it's sometimes it's not a very pleasant stand to take. So I want to thank you again, Lion Gord, for the presentation. And well, I hope I've, I've hope I've uh, at least made people question. <laughs> I don't think we've got, got all the answers yet. Well, I don't think you. I don't think you're ever going to have all the answers. Like you said, you know, there's no, there's no right, right way to do. It. There's no really concrete right way to 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 apply to a, a specific situation because you have to take a lot of different things into consideration. And even when when instances are brought to the international level, to the international board, uh, there is a lot of consideration taken at those. I, I know I served on the Constitution and Bylaws Committee when I served on the, the two years on the board and chairman of that committee my second year. And there there were situations where we had a lot of discussion on things that you would think that was, you know, um, black and white, but there's a lot of gray areas out there. Right. And uh, you really have to take a lot of consideration into some of these things to make sure you're doing the right thing. So uh, with that, I want to thank you again. And and uh, if anyone wants to continue some of this uh, discussion on ethics, you, you can uh, continue on the Lions forum.org website and going on to the discussion board and, and uh, continuing on that situation right there. And I think that's um, my next slide that I have up here just to remind everyone. Yeah, how about that? Go right on to the lionsforum.org website and click on discussion boards there and you can go into this particular um, uh, course and uh, continue the discussion there. I will remind you that we do have the next uh, two weeks, we have a couple of webinars scheduled. Uh, next week on April 28th is uh, District Cabinet Selection, Working as a Team. That is a master's required course. And then the following week we have an elective course for the master's program on protocol on Tuesday, May, 8th, May 5th, I'm sorry. And again, those are 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can register by going on to the lionsuniversity.org website and going on, clicking onto the calendar, and click on those uh, courses individually. I'd like to remind you, you can take the quiz immediately following this webinar. Uh, the quiz is loaded up, and, and you can go on to the course page, uh, which is shown at the bottom of this slide, course uh, 225. You can click on the Mark as Completed tab at the bottom of the course page and uh, then click on the Next Unit tab, which will take you directly to the quiz. And uh, again, I'd like to thank Lion Gord for his presentation tonight and remind uh, and thank everyone attending tonight for, for joining us in the webinar. And remind you as you uh, as you leave to log out of the session by by clicking on that small uh, box up at the top, either on the the, the, X at the very top of your control panel, or go into file and and click on exiting uh, the webinar, and uh, then we'll make sure that everyone is gone. So with that, I want to thank you very much, and hope we see you back again next week and in weeks to come with uh, 
another webinar for Lyons University. Thank you very much.